So now let's look at our allele frequencies at time equals one. Our genotype frequencies at time equals zero look like this. We've got our standard p squared, 2p, q, and q squared. And at time equals one, we already figured out that these allele frequencies are going to change depending on their fitness in the population. So we also know that at time equals zero, we expect to see this following equation, p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals one. And if this equation is true, then we can solve for p for this. And if we solve for p, we see that p equals p squared plus pq. So if we're gonna look at time equals one, and we wanna find out the p for that, then what this is going to be is this is all going to be modified by these frequencies that we find up here. So instead of p being p squared plus pq, it's going to be the p squared is now going to look more like this number. So we're gonna have p squared times the fitness for our p squared, or sorry, for our big A1, A1 individuals divided by the average fitness for the population. And instead of pq, we're going to have this number here. We're gonna just take out that two because we don't need it. So this is going to be pq times the average fitness of our PQ individuals divided by the average fitness of the whole population. Likewise, we're gonna see the same thing for Q. QT equals one. This is just going to equal Q squared times the fitness for our Q individuals divided by the average excess fitness, for, sorry, the average fitness for our population plus PQ times the fitness for our PQ individuals divided by the average fitness for the whole population. And this is how we get our allele frequencies for time equals one.